Let's bring in our next guest, Dakota Draconi. Dakota, how's it going? It's going well. Nice to see you. Uh, the, Dakota is here to talk about breaking lens. And uh, before I, why don't you just tell everybody what, what it's about? Oh, well, Breaking the Silence is a local nonprofit dedicated to awareness about child abuse and related issues, and we do that by community education and survivor empowerment. Okay. And, and what, what do you do for, the, for Breaking the Silence? I'm a public speaker. I got a Master in Social Work from Fresno State in 2012, but I've been speaking publicly about child abuse since 1999. Okay. Uh, why, why is child abuse uh, so important to you, Dakota? Well, I'm a survivor of child abuse, domestic violence, and rape. And so one thing that I learned is, as the author, author Audre Lorde said, your silence will not protect you. And so silence only protects perpetrators, and it's only by breaking the silence that we stop the cycle of abuse. So uh, child abuse, domestic abuse, and rape, and, you're, and you, you go to school so that you can be the person that comes out and helps people that have been through the same things. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not employed as a social worker with Fresno County. I have a degree in social work, and I use that to, to help me build the organization and, and to better understand the survivors I want to help empower. Did you start Break, Break the Silence? Yes, my partner and I did. I was in a uh, feminist activism class in my undergrad work in the Women's Studies program at Fresno State and we needed a project and so I suggested we do a child abuse awareness event and the organization was born out of that event that was our first one and this coming April we're going to have our ninth um, child abuse community awareness event. Child abuse, it's a tough one. I mean, I, 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 it, nothing gets me more furious than hearing about that type of stuff. Uh, I, you get people to talk about it. That's your, th your thing, right? That is my thing. And do you get children to talk about it or adults to talk about what's happened to them in the past? What Everybody. We have a society conspiracy of silence around the issue. We don't want to think about it, and we don't want to talk about it, and that's how it's allowed to continue. And I was thinking when I was listening to your first, gra first guest, um, Mike Reynolds, and he was talking about how many people are going to be let out of prison as a result of Prop 47. Um, I don't have a position on that prop, but I was thinking about how few child abusers ever even go to jail. Most of them never even spend a night in jail, let alone go to prison for what they've done. Because the children don't speak up when they're being abused? Partly because Because they're scared or because this is someone that's supposed to love them and, and, and they don't want to get them in trouble? Absolutely, that's part of it. 90% of victims are abused by a parent or somebody in their circle of trust. Um, but that's only part of it. Even when children do speak up about their abuse, they don't get the help that they need and they don't get the justice that they need. Can we talk about the different kinds of abuse that there are? Absolutely, there's okay. four distinct types. Um, the first of which is neglect. And then there's physical abuse, sexual abuse, and emotional abuse. And uh, you deal with all of them. Absolutely. Uh, when, when, you, when you meet a young child and they start telling you things, start opening up to you and uh, talking about things that they probably never talked about before and it hurts them to speak about, uh, it's got to hurt you a little bit too. It is very painful. I don't actually have, um, generally speaking, I don't have children disclosed to me, but because I do a lot of public speaking, I do have a lot of people who come to me after I speak and they break their silence and they tell me their stories and, um, and I cherish those moments and I honor their survivorship. But yes, it can also be really painful. But not listening to it doesn't change the reality. Then there's domestic abuse. Yes. Your, your companion, your partner. Uh, abusing you and, and I'm assuming four different kinds there too? Yes, absolutely. Right. And uh, when you do your speaking, I, I'm going to say that I think those people come out to you the most. Actually, no, it's the child abuse survivors really? who come out more. Yes. Is it? Mm -hmm. Now, b wh why is that? Because they're the ones holding it back the most? Um, I don't, I, I would hazard a guess that it could be because uh, people who are still in a domestic violence relationship, it's a lot less likely for them to come out and, and be honest about that because they're still afraid. 
and the survivors that I speak to um, of child abuse, they have been out of their abuse for some time, and so they feel safer to disclose. Well, on the domestic thing, they're so afraid. Uh, they're so afraid. Uh, they're so embarrassed sometimes too, right? I mean, that's, oh, absolutely. Th th that's part of it. Absolutely, we have that society conspiracy of silence continues in in adulthood, and and we ask all the time. We ask, why doesn't she leave? And that's not the question we should be asking. That's blaming the victim. What we should be asking is why does he batter? Or why does she batter? Because women batter their spouses as well. And so we shouldn't be asking why doesn't she tell? Why doesn't she leave? We should be asking why does the abuser batter her? You went through child abuse. You went through domestic abuse. Is there some kind of correlation there? Absolutely, there is a correlation there. Um, survivors of child abuse who don't get the help that they need are more likely to end up in a domestic violence relationship in adulthood. Because this is the screwed up kind of love they know? Yeah, it, that's part of it. Part of it is that it's a cycle. It tends to continue from one generation to the next. Do they, do, are, are, they, are, are they drawn to this type of person? In some ways, yes. And that Are those type of people drawn to them? Yes, they are. Yeah. Absolutely. Predators. Yes. Because they're just big bullies anyway, right? Pretty much. Why not, why not look, the, look for the person that's easier to bully? Absolutely. You're, you're having an event coming up? Yes, at um, Fresno City College on November 21st. The psych department at Fresno City um, have joined with Breaking the Silence to, to host me speaking. And it's in Forum Hall 101 um, from 6.30 to 9.30. I'll speak for two hours. Um, I'll tell my story and I'll weave it in with policies and, and, and other things that people need to know to understand the reality of child abuse in America. And then I'll talk about what we can all do to make a difference in our world. And then for the better part of the last hour, there'll be a Q&A session so that people can ask me questions. And then at the very end, we've decided yesterday to add on a survivor medallion ceremony. And I have a medallion here. I don't know if we can show it on camera, but um, it's, it's a Veterans of Domestic Wars Survivor Medallion. And basically what we found is that the part of the organization where we do survivor empowerment, um, we found that the people go away to other countries and they fight for the freedom of this country. However you feel about that is irrelevant. The ideal is there. They volunteer to do that. They come back, we give them medals. I didn't sign up for this battle. I did not choose to be born into the family I was born into, and so we decided that we would honor survivors with these veterans of domestic war survivor medallions for any child abuse, domestic violence, rape, or any other type of um, the domestic wars. After speaking, yes. Dakota, have you ever had the abuser come up to you? I have. Actually, I've had one who was a registered sex offender and he told his counselor about me and his counselor contacted me and asked me to come and speak to a group of registered sex offenders. You, 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 don't, you, you don't take a very easy path there, Dakota. <laughs> I is. tell you, this, this, this got, has got to be very tough it, at times, but very rewarding too, right? Absolutely. Uh, what, who, who should go to this? Everybody. Everybody should go to this. It's open to the public. Parking is free after 6 p.m. And everybody should come and they should bring their family members and their friends and anybody that they care about. They should come and hear what I have to say. Because they don't know who's suffering, do they? Absolutely. Dakota, thank you very much for coming on The Buzz. I appreciate you. Thank you, Chuck. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Stick around.